Where do you stand on the zombie apocalypse? Do you have a favorite weapon or a favorite strategy? What kinds of zombies would you be fighting? Even the fast kind? The kind of zombie that you fight makes a huge difference. So is there a scientific difference between fast and slow zombies? We've already lurched over a lot of zombie science ground here on this show, from how the Walking Dead virus works or doesn't, to how quickly humanity would succumb to the zombie menace. But one aspect of zombie science that we have not covered yet is how do you define zombie disease? And is there something about that disease that produces different kinds of zombies? Let's start off with some definitions. To me, slow zombies are like the ones in The Walking Dead or its new spinoff, Fear the Walking Dead. See, it's still scary, but not an immediate threat. On the other hand, fast zombies are the ones found in 28 Days Later, no, I don't buy the rage virus argument, they zombies, man, or like the ones in World War Z. Hey look, Brad Pitt and I coincidentally dressed the same as, oh my goodness, they're fast. Either way, these unholy beasts have something wrong with them. Now, if you really want to get nerdy about zombie science, talk to some neuroscientists who wrote the book, literally. Neuroscientists Timothy Versteinen and Bradley Wojtek wrote the very fun, very geeky book called Do Zombies Dream of Undead Sheep, which you can pick up now, and it's all about the neuroscience of zombie brains. According to Versteinen and Wojtek, the zombie diagnosis is Consciousness Deficit Hypoactivity Disorder, or CDHD, and it is defined as follows. CDHD is an acquired syndrome whereby patients present with a lack of intentional control over their actions, lethargic and fatigued movements, loss of a sense of pleasure, general language dysfunction, memory impairments, and an inability to suppress appetite functions such as eating or aggressive fight or flight behaviors. At least CDHD gives a name to the zombie disease, but does it really explain the difference between fast and slow walkers? Well, it doesn't really, but having a neuroscientific diagnosis lets us categorize the two in relation to brain activity. Versteinen and Wojtek do this with CDHD1 and CDHD2, referring to both fast and slow zombies and their diseases. If zombie disease ultimately resides in the brain, then the degree to which the brain is affected by whatever alien or virus or ghost is at work here may explain why there are two different varieties of zombie. Versteinen and Wojtek called their idea the time to resurrection hypothesis. And I actually love this idea, not only because it makes scientific sense, but this is actually what we see in pop culture. Think back to movies like 28 Days Later or World War Z. How long does it actually take for a human to turn into a zombie? Maybe seconds? And what about The Walking Dead or Fear the Walking Dead? How long does it take then? Hours or more? It seems that on the whole, fast zombies turn quicker into zombies than slow zombies do. And what happens the longer the brain is starved for oxygen and nutrients? Carl! Oh wait, I'm mixing up uh, fictional universe, whatever. <laughs> the longer the brain is starved for nutrients, the more damage it will incur if it is ever resuscitated. We know this from patients who are resuscitated after long periods of time and unfortunately suffer brain damage. In other words, slow zombies are slow because they take longer to turn. When they awaken, they will have more cognitive impairments and trouble moving. On the other hand, fast zombies turn very quickly, meaning that they will suffer less brain damage. They might even retain the ability to run or reason. All that being said, best weapon katana, best strategy hole up in a department store in Northern Canada, and best zombie to fight? Slow zombies. Why? Because my opinion, but also some science. Want more science? Check out my last video on why no one recognizes Superman. Subscribe to Nerdist for more videos if you want because science two days earlier than everyone else head to Vessel at Vessel.com slash Nerdist. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, you can hit me up in the comment section below. Thanks.